This is a polpo, octopus. This one came from Spain. It's a really nice octopus. Where Maria is from in Gaeta, they have a lot of beautiful little octopus all over. And they use it to make a lot of nice things, like La Famosa Tiela de Gaeta, the famous Tiela from Gaeta. They make calzone, pizza. They make, they cut it up and they put it with potatoes and sauce. They make it a lot of nice different ways. The word purpa in dialect, it's called a purpa in dialect, polpo in Italiano. But in dialect, purpa, that word has inspired legions of poets all over the world, at least in Italy, just as much as the moon or love. For instance, one of my favorites, capa de purpa, which means test the polpo, or you call somebody an octopus head. This guy is like a, an octopus. Stuporpa, what an octopus. A volte ho il desiderio di diventare un polpo, così tanto per provare la dolce sensazione di prendere a schiaffi otto persone alla volta. Which means, basically in English, I desire to be an octopus merely so I can slap eight people upside the head at once. We're gonna come at you in the future with a lot of videos on octopus, on polpo, il polpo, on how to buy the polpo, how to, how to clean the octopus, and a lot of good recipes on how to cook the octopus, like the tiella that you saw my wife and daughter do already. And we're also gonna do a video on the philosophical discourse of Aristotle's octopus. You know, Plato, his teacher, believed in forms and ideas he would find the universal in forms and ideas and aristotle unlike plato believed that he could find the universal by directly observing nature in the world here and now and he was one of the greatest documentators and observer and documentators of the marine life at the time one of the things he observed and discovered was the octopus and he believed that the universal was epitomized in the octopus, that the octopus epitomized the universal form. They're Greek and they do have the saying, you know, una razza una faccia, for Italians of Magna Grecia, Greater Greece, a lot of them have ancestry in ancient Greece, but it also ties into Italia and Italy because of the Renaissance, the rediscovery of Greek thought and of these great thinkers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle Pythagoras and some of them that were actually in Italy too. But just remember, Plato influenced the Italian Renaissance largely. A lot of the thinkers of the Italian Renaissance were Neoplatonists like Ficino and um, Mirandola and the Academy in Medici's sculpture garden was Neoplatonic where Michelangelo started with his sculpture after he left Gerlandaio. Michelangelo was heavily influenced by Plato. That's why Michelangelo would look at a rock of marble and see the form inside and he believed the form was already there and he only had to release that form from the marble. It's very neoplatonic. Plato influenced Michelangelo, but Aristotle who believed in observing the natural world influenced Da Vinci. So this does touch in Italian to Italian, Italianita in this way is that these Greek great thinkers of Greek philosophy influenced the entire Renaissance, the thinkers, the, the, the writers, the poets, the artists. So Plato, think Michelangelo. When you hear Aristotle, think Da Vinci, because Da Vinci observed the natural world and all the drawings, and so did Aristotle. Aristotle went to the islands in Greece, like Lesbos, and made many new observations and documentations of marine life, including our octopus. And like I said, he believed that the universal form was epitomized in the octopus. I'm Charlie Sabo, tanto da dire. Ciao.